beginners, hi. Uh, welcome to another episode of whatever this is. I was recently on a hunt for uh, a new amp. Uh, if you've seen, I have a Tone King Imperial, which I've owned for nearly 10 years. That amp does the most amazing black place uh, cleans ever, um, but it doesn't really do anything else. It's got a second channel for dirt. I suppose uh, I would say it's based on a tweed. I don't like that whole tweed, edgy, harsh sound. Um, and even with the attenuator, it's hard to control that channel. It's really, really loud. So I've been looking for something that can do clean and a bit of dirt without putting my pedals in front of it. Um, I've tr recently tried a Vox AC10 and I loved it. Uh, I thought it was fantastic and you can get that kind of little bit of gentle overdrive uh, Hendrix style thing and you can also go a little bit further into sort of Stevie Ray territory. It, does, it only goes about as far as that on the Vox AC10 but it's a 10 inch speaker, it doesn't have an effects loop, uh, the speaker out is a slightly strange arrangement. So I thought well let's see if I can find something bigger. So I saw a great demo, Larry Basilio, who is just strikes me as the most wonderful person ever. She does an amazing demo of this amp on her channel. She's a Laney sponsored artist. And uh, it's got two LA, EL84s in it. And uh, it's British made, so I thought, well look, I'll give it a chance. It's not super boutique, although I have to say, I bought this on Amazon for an incredibly low price. I think the head was 312 pounds, which, um, actually I think it was less, the head was less than the speaker cabinet. Anyway, so they are an amazing, uh, an amazing deal. So uh, uh, lots of other YouTube reviews have gone through the front control. We've got the usual gain, uh, let's have a look, bass, middle, treble, uh, reverb and uh, master volume. Um, there's also a solid state boost here, which uh, again, as you know, is a uh, boost that they've taken from one of their pedals. It's absolutely clean boost, we'll just try it in a second. Um, and the reverb is solid state, but it's a very, very nice reverb, I have to say. <coughs> Uh, so let's have a... Now I've put a little bit of drive on here, so let me just take that off. By the way, it has two inputs. This has... Whether it has an attenuator or not, I can't exactly say because they don't tell you, but they use the word attenuated. Uh, so it has a half a watt input and a 15 watt input. This is a 15 watt uh, and it's fantastic on the half a watt setting. Uh, so I'm indoors, I actually live in a flat and the, the master is on half. I can put the gain on about half. It's a little bit loud but it's really fine for home practice. Just, that's what I suppose most people would call edge of breakup, but really it's just not a satisfying sound. Maybe I've been spoiled by the Tone King, but this is not the 3D uh, beautiful sound that you get from a top end amp. It feels about like 300 pounds worth of amp. Uh, now that doesn't mean it's terrible, but it's just not uh, inspiring. So. Now, I have got the mids totally scooped, and that's because... Um, I love blackface sounds. So blackface sounds... It's not even, that's not even quite it. But blackface... 
Harry sounds basically are scooped, so there's a lot of bass, there's a lot of treble, and not much in the middle. <laughs> put these two amps side by side, the Tone King Imperial and this amp. This kind of gets close but it always feels a bit woody and midi. Uh, so there's, it's not really getting that super duper black place clean, you know, the Fender Deluxe, the Princeton, it's not getting that uh, sound, which is kind of what I wanted for. Now you're going to say in the comments, don't get it for that because it's a hot rodded Marshall. And that's basically what I found out. This design is kind of like a home JCM 800, which is totally not my kind of amp. Um, now, if we bring the mids up, I'm just gonna bring the mids up and I'm gonna put the EQ back on noon. Bring the volume down just a touch. You get that. A very, very uh, mid heavy sound. the game but what happens it never really uh, gets to what I would call a uh, you know a meaty chunky sound um, and I like I obviously like Stevie Ray Vaughan I like Stevie Ray Vaughan right try and do is crank up the grain gain. So there's some gain, right? Uh, I suppose most uh, heavy roll people would call that very light gain. And you know, if I hit the rear humbucker, classic rock territory but even there this is not really excelling it's not excelling remember when Larry Basilio is playing this she's a fantastic player she's an incredible player and as you know all these people can make a uh, an old block of wood with a rubber band on it sound good so it's just not uh, it's not it's really not satisfying now I tried a lot of different EQ here's the boost I'm gonna turn the boost on the boost about halfway up and turn the master down a little bit okay you get the idea. This is full on JCM 800 territory. If I could play any heavy rock, I would. So the um. Now, you can just keep going on the, I mean, the gain's only on, uh, what's that, like eight? And uh, if you just keep going. You can't play that either. Just uh, a big sound. Now, okay, 
uh, it's not my kind of thing, but I just thought I'd show it to you anyway. So this is, I've got the boost on. Um, now, let's do one other thing. Let's swap into the 15 watt uh, input because obviously it's gonna get super loud, you, as you all know. Valve amplifiers, for our American friends who are watching, tube amplifiers, are super loud. So, I've turned the gain down, the master down. straight up. If I, if I scoot the mids and uh, push the treble. So it's got that kind of breathy uh, martial thing going on. Fletcher Monks and Curve and all of that. So it does sound a bit better louder, but oh my goodness, it really doesn't have that incredible feeling when you sit down and you sit next to a piece of gear and the, something sparkles in your fingers, even if you can't play that well, and you go, wow, that just sounds great. And what's weird is this is about the same price as the Vox AC10, but the Vox AC10 sounds better. Uh, it just does. Now this has got loads more controls. It's got an effects loop blah, 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 uh, but the AC10 just sounds better. So if you're gonna spend 350 pounds on an amp, my, and you're considering this, go and play a Vox AC10 just to see what you think. Now, if you want a hot-rodded uh, JCM800 in your bedroom, this is a pretty good bet for 300 pounds. The other thing is, all the reviewers say this looks really nice and it's got boutique design. I don't think it looks that nice. Uh, what's this lopsided grill thing going on? It's just not that it doesn't have a boutique feel. You know, uh, I think Music Radar say oh, it looks like a boutique amp. It doesn't look like a boutique amp. It really doesn't. Uh, it it um, it maybe doesn't look completely cheap. It doesn't look like a Boss Katana, but it doesn't look like a boutique amp. Or maybe it does in your book. So overall. I tell you what I did, I bought a bad cat and I'm going to do a review of that and that's going to be a lot more detailed. But this does not stand up and actually it's quite good news really because we're spending a lot of money on this stuff. 
This does not stand up next to a Tone King Imperial. Although, to be fair, it can do classic rock, which a tank, a Tone King Imperial cannot do without a pedal. And it definitely does not stand up next to a bad cat. So, um, and that can do classic rock. So I just think I'm sending this thing back to Amazon and uh, it's good for what it is, but it's not inspiring. And we have a limited amount of time to spend on playing music and we need equipment gear that inspires us and makes us feel like, wow, this is really, it makes me feel of music and it hits me here in the heart. This does not, it's functional, it's functional. Which is great because we all need functional gear, but it's just not uh, inspiring. Okay, that's my review. If you want to put some comments down below, feel free. I should have said at the beginning, like and subscribe, but this is just one of those things. So if you've made it this far and you actually liked what you saw, please hit subscribe. It does help the channel. I'll put a couple of links down below. I know nobody after this review is going to buy it, but if you want to buy it, I'm going to put a couple of Amazon links down below in, in the uh, text so that in case you do want to buy it, it would be great if you clicked my link and I get a little bit of kickback from Amazon. It costs you nothing. Otherwise, like and subscribe. See you next time. I'm going to do the Bad Cat uh, review as soon as I get a day spare because I want to do a lot of detail on that amp. It's amazing. It's amazing. Okay, thanks. Bye for now.